Hey everybody, welcome to this MVA Jumpstart on Universal Windows App Development using Cortana and the Speech SDK. I think we're going to have a lot of yeah. fun today. Oh yeah, definitely. So we're going to go ahead and commence with introductions and then we're <clears throat> going to start working on content. So <clears throat> first I'll introduce myself. My name is Jeremy Foster. Uh, maybe you've seen me before. I've done a number of MVAs. I really enjoy this. And I go by Code Foster online, so you can obviously find me online at CodeFoster.com. You can find me on Twitter at Code Foster. I do recommend you go hit follow there. That'll be nice. And uh, I've got a number of interests that, a uh, <laughs> number of passions, if you will. I, I'm actually an author, presenter, hacker, coder, recently more of a kind of a maker and uh, really enjoying the hardware side of things, having a lot of fun with that. So I've got some projects that, uh, that I work on that you're welcome to check out at codefoster.com slash codechat. That's a podcast slash code show. And I have a fun little project that I think you might like called slash tweet monkey. And uh, you can check out tweet monkey and we're going to be looking at tweet monkey's older brother today. So uh, that's me in a nutshell. Uh, I enjoy this. Nick, can you go ahead and get, tell everybody the what for about Nick Landry? Sure thing. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Landry. I'm also a senior technical evangelist here at Microsoft. Um, some of you know me in the Microsoft community uh, as Active Nick. It's basically my Twitter handle. It's my gamer tag on Xbox. It's basically every everything that I know uh, about um, my presence online. Um, I'm a speaker at a lot of events. I speak at uh, events like uh, VS Live, Dev Intersection, and everything. Uh, I'm a blogger at Age of Mobility ageofmobility.com. Uh, I write code, I've been a developer for quite a long time, and uh, I'm also maybe not as far as you are on the, the, the maker side of things, but I also dabble on the maker space. Uh, I'm a gamer as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time uh, for gaming, of course, because I'm also a father. And, uh, <laughs> but it's okay. It. Yeah, that pretty much does it. Um, but I, I'm pretty much known as an apps guy, so I focus on cross-platform mobile development. So yes, my favorite platform is definitely Windows and Windows Phone. But I also do iOS, I also do Android, so I try to cover the whole spectrum of mobile development, understanding how to do cross-platform as well with technologies like Xamarin or Cordova. Uh, I also have a past... Uh, uh, in GIS, like geospatial applications. Oh, fun. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Actually, I always love maps. Uh, I, I was actually working for many years uh, with Big Maps with a team of developers that were working great uh, applications for Big Maps. So you can find me on Twitter at ActiveNick. Uh, that's also my GitHub as well, where you can find more about me. And um, I try to do a little bit of game development as well, sp specifically on the mobile side of things. Used to be an XNA guy. Now I'm learning Unity and Game Maker and all these great um, uh, engines for game development. And uh, that's basically about, uh, about it for me. And if you want to check out some of my apps that I have in the store, just go to bigballedapps.com. <laughs> and uh, I think it gives you a quick idea of where the name comes from. <laughs> so that's basically uh, it about me. I'm really excited about today because it's, um, it's a fun topic. I mean, we're, we're going to be talking with Cortana, not just about Cortana, but we're going to be talking with Cortana. Yeah, Cortana's kind of the third person in the room here. Yeah, totally. She's awesome. Now, Nick, you happen to be specifically passionate about speech and speech agents. Is that right? Yeah, it's um, it's something that you know. For the longest time, we've been watching movies and watching TV shows and everything, and we always see these computers and personalities that are talking to us. And for years, we've been waiting for like, when am I finally going to be able to talk to my, talk computer? to my computer? But it's more than just the cool factor of talking, you know, to a computer. It's also about the um, the applications that it enables, how it changes our lifestyle, and we're going to talk a lot about yeah, that today. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Actually, let's go ahead and tell everybody what we're going to be talking about yeah, sure. over this course, over the next six hours. We're glad that you guys are joining us live. So what I've got here is a list of the six modules that we're going to have today. We're going to start with module one, just an introduction to Cortana, an introduction to speech, and just kind of let you know how Cortana works. Um, because it, when you know how the core platform of Cortana works, how the, how the system level of Cortana works, then you know how to integrate your apps with Cortana to make a, a good experience for the users. Next, we're going to look at speech synthesis. So this is how to make the computer talk to you. It's kind of a two-way conversation, and you want the computer to be able to talk to you, and that's speech synthesis. So Nick's going to share that with us. Well, speech synthesis is also like the easiest way that you can get started with speech today. Yeah. With literally just a few lines of code, 
you can have your application talking to you. Yeah, and by the way, we're going to be talking about code. Uh, we're going to be showing both C Sharp and JavaScript. Right. Nick's more of a C Sharp guy, and -sharp. I'm more of a JavaScript guy. That's just our languages of choice. And and luckily, all of this speech stuff works fine with both. So you'll see examples Correct. in both. Maybe tune in for the ones you're interested in, and uh, tune in for the other one too, because maybe you could learn something. <laughs> I, I sure can. There you go. <laughs> Module three, we're going to be talking about how to configure your app so that Cortana knows how to launch people into your app, not just take them to your app or take them to a sub page in your app, but actually perform tasks right from the front page of their, of their phone without ever having to l explicitly launch the app and touch anything. Right. Yeah. So that's module three. Module four, um, Nick's going to talk about speech recognition. So once the user is in your app, how do you continue that conversation and continue to ask them questions and get their voice response in the app and, uh, and act on that intelligently? It's, yeah, it's pretty important because if the phone is going to say something, then the first response, of course, you're going to have is you want to respond back. You want to say something yeah. to your phone. So that's what we're going to see in module four. It's pretty cool because Whereas the Cortana integration with the voice commands will allow you to go in and pass in parameters and really control the experience once you launch the app, the speech recognition side of things is actually quite powerful because we'll learn all about like different constraints and grammars we can use and how you can even do very powerful speech recognition offline without an internet connection. All right, so then once we've given you kind of the details uh, in modules two, three, and four, in module five, we're going to go step up to a bit of a higher level, and we're going to tell you how to do uh, really good speech design. Because this is very personal, it's very much an experience for the users, and you, you need to not just implement it technically, you need to think holistically about the experience that the user is going to have from start to finish with your app. So that's important. And then finally, in section six, what are we going to look at? Uh, section six, we're going to play with more more advanced stuff. Basically, some some can be considered more advanced. Others is just stuff that's a little out of the beaten path. So we're going to look at taking all the learnings from the the technical learnings from modules two, three, and four, and then also some of the best practices learned in module five. And then how can you then enable more advanced scenarios inside of module six? So we'll we'll see some cool stuff, even some hardware. Yeah, we'll yeah. even play with some hardware. You're not going to get two makers in front of you without getting a little bit of Cortana <laughs> all the way to IoT device example. So totally. So that's what the day looks like. We hope you guys will stick around all day. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, just to set your expectations, we are expecting that you are anywhere from a beginner to an advanced Windows Phone developer. It, you really could be anywhere on that spectrum. If you're a beginner, you're going to learn a lot of good concepts, high-level concepts, and you're going to see some good introductory code. And of course, you'll be able to download the code, so you, it's not like you'll have to write it from scratch. But if you've been doing this a while, you're still going to get some really good design principles and some of the apps, especially that, uh, that Nick wrote, are going to really take you really in depth. Yeah, because the, the idea is that if you're a beginner, maybe you say, well, I'm not really good with Windows Phone development or Windows development, but our samples are actually quite accessible. They're not, you're not going to see like advanced samples with like thousands of lines of code or anything. This is not your typical, I would say, like enterprise apps, MVA. This is more about lifestyle applications, the kind of stuff that people use every day. Um, However, even if you've been developing Windows Phone or Windows Store applications for, for years now, you can still learn something because I meet people all the time that tell me like, oh yeah, I've built this app and this app, and then I show them some of my apps that use speech, and they're like, oh, this is cool. I, I didn't know that you could do speech on the phone. So even though some people know like all the ins and outs of Windows Phone, maybe they haven't explored speech yet. Yeah. So today, they get to go deeper on that topic. And as I said, <laughs> with just a few lines of code, you can make the phone talk, but if you write a little more, and if you explore some of the more advanced topics, what you can do is pretty cool. Yeah. There's a couple of other MVA courses that you should go check out. Just go to uh, MicrosoftVirtualAcademy.com and search for Building Apps for Windows Phone 8.1. And also look for Developing Universal Windows Apps with HTML and JavaScript. So both of those are going to give you some good introduction to how to get started on the platforms. And if, you watch, if, you're, if you're watching this recorded and you want to watch those before you watch Cortana, that might be a good sequence of things. Uh, the MVA community is really excited and it's growing fast. Uh, last time I looked, there were actually over 2.7 million registered users and uh, there's a lot of activity on there. My favorite thing about the way MVA works is that when I go watch a video and I just get three minutes into it and then my, my kid interrupts me and I, I got to come back to it another day, when I come back, I'm at the exact same spot. It's right. remembered everything that I've watched and where I was. So that's really helpful. 
Um, it's also fun because you can collect these MVA points. Yes. I, I'm, I'm not very high up there, but there's some people no. that have oh, got yeah, some there, serious points on MVA. Oh, yeah. There, there's some people that you can tell they've been watching a lot of content. I mean, we... I'm sure these people can write like their way in and out of. We should probably measure their head size and see if it actually <laughs> something is, like I mean, that. Be yeah. interesting. It, it's like the the gamer score of MVA, you know, yeah. like Xbox points, yeah, you know, with achievements. Yeah, except so, arguably more important because this actually amounts to real knowledge. Yeah, it's easier to get a job with this knowledge <laughs> than with your uh, your skills in with Halo. With your gamer you tag know? score, yeah. <laughs> Well, you can actually get an extra 50 bonus MVA points for tuning into this live or at least before uh, March 12th of 2015 by entering that code. So go to that link and uh, do that. Um, if you uh, forget that, it'll be available in the chat room. So uh, you, you, won't, you won't have to memorize it right now before I move off of that slide. Okay, Nick, should we go ahead and get started and introduce everybody to uh, get started with module one and introduce yep. everybody to Cortana and speech? Sure. All right. Let's get so started. here we go. Here's the module overview, very simple. We'll look at speech, and then we'll look more specifically at Cortana. That's kind of a subset of the, the, uh, the overall speech category. And then, just so you can kind of see where Cortana fits, we're gonna position Cortana with the other major mobile platforms. Right. Just kind of get a feel for where it sits and what's covered and what's not, and, and what's, what's the road forward and things like that. Right, because speech is covered on all the three main major platforms for mobile devices, but uh, they're not all equal in terms of capabilities. Yeah. And this module is going to be a little less developer focused because it's going to be more about the end user experience. How can you, what can you do with Cortana today? Yeah. But it's also very important because as a developer, you really need to understand how Cortana works on yeah. the phone right. before you can write an app that basically augments that experience with Cortana. Because for speech, more so than any of the other modes of interaction, it's important that there's a congruent congruent experience, right. that what they experience when they're going to core Cortana from their start screen is, is going to take them into your app and give them a very fluid experience. Yeah, totally, especially since when it comes to speech, it's, um, it's easy to write a good app, but it's hard to build a great app. Yeah. It, and it's also easy to build a bad app because you think <laughs> something is great and then you try it and for the first five minutes you go like, this is awesome. But then the more you use it, you realize, okay, well, this phone talking to me all the time, it's annoying. <laughs> so it's, it's very easy to create an annoying app with speech. Yeah. It doesn't mean that, that should deter you from using speech. It simply means there's a better way maybe of building it. And that's why module five is gonna be very important for that too. It should deter you from using speech wrongly. Wrongly, yeah. That's right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with introduction to speech. Speech is an interesting mode of, of uh, interfacing with a device. We're, we're talking about mobile for the most part here, but you know, really interacting with devices. We're talking about uh, big devices, little devices, big screens, small screens, in your house, in your car, whatever. Whenever a human is interacting with a device, we call that a user interface. It's the way that we and the, the devices interface with each other. And speech is specifically a natural user interface. So it's in a subcategory of user interfaces and it's called natural because it's something that we naturally do. We naturally speak, we yep. naturally gesture. We don't naturally touch keyboards and click mice, right? Those are not natural. Use well, maybe you could argue well, these days it is Actually, natural. it's funny because I was going to say we learn to talk before we learn to touch a computer. But when I look at my kids, they're actually <laughs> learning to touch devices a lot more. And they don't talk that much yet. Yeah. They're still too young. Yeah, that's but, right. But yeah, it's, it is definitely a natural way of interacting. And that's when you realize you can, you can truly have a conversation with someone just like you, you, you want to have a conversation with a computer. That's why we have these personalities in there because we don't want just to talk to a machine, you're gonna talk about that anyways. Yeah, right. But personalities are important. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna bring up these four characteristics of speech, and that is that speech is personal, it's experiential, it's critical, and I'll tell you what I mean by that, and it's also fun. It's a fun category, and you can have some fun with it as a developer as well yeah. as as a user. So speech being personal really to me just means this, and that is that this is a, this is a natural user interface. So this is something that, that the people have been doing for a really long time. They've been speaking, they've been gesturing, as you can see as I'm speaking with my hands right now. And, uh, and so this is something that's natural for people, and so it feels very personal. And the interesting thing is that people, we say that people want to be able to talk to their device because they don't want to have to type on it, but the thing is a person does not really want to talk to their phone. They want to talk to a person. Right. They want to talk to another person. They're, they're 
unwilling to talk to a cold hard device. They're willing to talk to an app or a service, you know, because that kind of feels like it has a little bit of anthropomorphic nature, right? Right. But ideally, they want to talk to a person. And so that's why I think there's some serious energy around these personal agents that are landing on mobile devices where it has a name. And, and a voice and some characteristics and, and, some, and some nature to it, right? Because it feels like you're talking to a person. Yeah, it's definitely important. You know, all these houses of the future they've been talking about and everything, and they say, oh, you'll be able to talk to your stove and talk to your dishwasher and talk to your fridge, but in a that way... That just makes you crazy. Yeah, I don't want to talk to my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and I certainly don't want my fridge to talk to me. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of a thing where... Yeah, if, if my fridge had a personality, but actually I don't want my fridge to have a personality. The cool <laughs> thing is, the cool thing, that would be an interesting personality, I think, you know. Um, but the cool thing is with, with a, person, a personality like Cortana, Cortana can kind of be an extension of your home, you know, and you're, we're going to talk about things like that as well. She can talk to the refrigerator for exactly. you. Exactly. Or when you talk to the refrigerator, you're actually talking to Cortana. Mm -hmm. and, and the refrigerator is just an extension yeah. of Cortana in a yep. way. So it, 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 we're talking about a world of possibilities. Uh, sorry, folks, there was no refrigerator demo yeah. in, this, in this day. <laughs> it's better. But, it's better. Oh, we actually have something better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah, way better than that. Yeah. So. Okay. So speech is personal. Speech is also experiential. Okay. This is a this is a true experience for people, and you can tell when you put a phone with speech capabilities in front of people.